Hey guys, it's Brianna for Triumphant Tuesdays. This week we're going to be talking about coping mechanisms, things you can do instead of using eating disorder behaviors or anything destructive you may do. And I was going to do a different type of video. I was going to do a talk, a picture video, but I decided to do a talking one instead. Because life happens and sometimes it changes like how I'm going to do my videos, just depending on what's going on and what I feel is appropriate. But um, I wanted to start by saying that just because I'm recovered doesn't mean my life is perfect and I still struggle with things. And um, ironically, my therapist left this week, so that's been really hard for me to deal with. I had her for five years and I'm having a hard time realizing that, like, this may sound really stupid, but realizing that she wasn't my friend and um, that she's just a therapist and it's a professional relationship. but. The reason I'm having a hard time with that is because it has so many parallels to friendship that I can't really separate it in my brain. So I feel like she died because I can't talk to her anymore. And it's really hard because she was the person I told everything to do, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. But life goes on. And uh, another one of my favorite quotes is, Life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, it's about learning to dance in the rain. And that's true, like storms happen and things aren't always perfect, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about my therapist leaving because that's something that might happen to you and just different things that I'm doing to cope with it so that it's a little bit easier for me because like I feel like on this channel that we establish credibility and trust with you guys by like being honest with our lives just and things that we learned. Falling, and just being honest that you know, we might have been eating disorders, so but our life definitely isn't perfect. So this is an, it's an example of what's going on in my life. I like, just I don't really know what I'm going to do without my therapist, honestly. Somehow. It completely so breaks my heart. And my entire body hurts. It's now. this psychosomatic thing that always happens to me. I just Whenever I don't have time to really deal with something, because I'm at work a lot, so. It's not like I can break down and cry about it, even though sometimes I really want to do that, like right now actually, but I'll try not to. Um, she was just really important and it felt like she didn't care about it as much as I did or she wouldn't miss me, but um, like I said before, like she saved my life, so if I didn't have her I'd be dead, so it's really hard for me, for her to just walk away, but she wanted to have a therapy practice in Mother's Day, so I didn't really have a choice. And that's really hard for me. I don't like when I don't have a choice. I don't think anyone does. So I'm just going to talk about things that I've done to deal with it, to help me through it. And um, stress and grief and problems cause a lot of stress in your body. So whether you're trying to like fight your eating disorder or something really bad happened to you and you're trying to cope with it, that, just, just the fact that that happened is actually causing a lot of stress on your body. So now it's not the time to be skipping your meals or skipping sleep, even though that's something you might want to do. It'll actually end up causing more stress. So you should try to eat what you need to and sleep extra, even if that means missing that party. It's really important to try to do the best you can to take care of yourself and um, just know that it will pass. Like that's what I'm reminding myself right now is that it won't always hurt this bad. Like I won't always feel like I'm about to cry and that the world's almost over, that it'll get better. That um, time, like I don't think it really heals all wounds, like the cliche thing, but it creates emotional distance and I think with that emotional distance we're able to put things in perspective and realize that life goes on and realize that it's okay and um, like not having somebody or not using your eating disorder is part of a new reality. It's learning to accept a new normal and a new reality so that takes time. But um, when I'm getting out it's remember that Pain is a process and going through it. Um, the longer you go through it, the less time you have. I'm not saying that like it'll definitely go back in a week or two weeks, but as you're going through the process of healing, your time is getting shorter. So eventually it'll go away. And um, just do things that comfort you. Like 
week I really like to go to Starbucks so I've been going to that a lot and um, I've just been choosing things I like to eat and I've been talking to my friends about it and that's really been helping but there's a lot of things that can help and just really reach out to people when I get sad I like to stumble up with a bunch of blankets hold my dog just random things like that but that really helps and I'm sorry this is how I'm focused and I'm tired but it's just really hard for me <laughs> another thing to do is embrace distraction and what I mean by that is just go about your normal life like right now it's hard for me to go to work because I feel like crying but I realize that that's actually helping me you know just going in there and doing the normal thing and seeing all the people and hearing the sounds and like feeling the uniform against my body always reminds me that a lot of my life is normal and that it'll be okay and I don't always think about my therapist in that situation when I'm at work you know that's eight hours a day I don't have to think about it and that's really helpful and plus if you're struggling with something or Let's say you're struggling with your eating disorder and because of that, like, you don't want to participate in life that can actually have negative consequences on your whole life. Like, I'm not planning on doing this at all, but just to give an example, I feel like eating disorders are caused, or eating disorder relapses are caused by problems that we don't really know how to solve. And I don't know how to solve the problem about my therapist leaving really... There is no way to solve it. She's leaving. It's over. It's done. I can't change that. That was her decision. That wasn't mine. So I had to accept that. But there's no solving it. It's just waiting for it to get better and hoping it gets better and trying. But um, let's say that because of that, I decided to relapse. This is what would happen. Um, I would get sick. Lose a lot of friends because my friends wouldn't want to deal with me. Um, even though work is really important to me, I would eventually lose the physical ability to do that. So I would lose my job. My parents would get frustrated with me. My boyfriend would get frustrated with me. I would. My relationships would be really strained. I would end up with medical issues. All of those things would happen. And that's not a good thing. Like, that's a whole bunch of problems. And when I started to get better, all of those problems, like the physical problems, would go away. Because, like I said, I think with eating disorders, you either get better or die. It's pretty much black and white. So let's say that I relapsed and then started to get better. Um, once I like went through therapy for that and stuff, like I would be faced with the original problem because I would remember. I think eating disorders are a distraction, but they don't really solve anything because then I'm stuck with the original problem. So this time and many other times I'm just trying my best to deal with the original problem. And um, distraction definitely helps and talking to your friends definitely help. But um, also things that happen to you aren't your fault a lot of the time. Like it's not my fault my therapist left. It's not because of me. It's because of her. I can't control that. But if I relapse into my eating disorder, which I'm not going to do. This is just a completely hypothetical answer or hypothetical thought just to make you guys think. But that would cause all those problems to me and I don't deserve that just because something bad happened to me that I can't control that doesn't mean I deserve to get sick again you know like I still deserve all my meals and all my snacks and hanging out with my friends and having a job and having money and having a life and having a boyfriend and all of those things like I still enjoy enjoy all those things and I deserve them and we have a particular problem that doesn't take away from that. But um, if you relapse it, do negative things, it will take away from your life. And it will end up hurting you. And um, 
since I think eating disorders are caused by problems, you'll end up hurting yourself more and you don't deserve that pain because you're worth more than that. So it's actually easier to deal with the problems that you do have instead of focusing on the ones that you can't change. Eventually the situation with my therapist will get better, but um, you know, like relapsing or doing negative things won't help that. And you don't have to use your body to show your pain. That's something my therapist taught me and something I've learned along the way. My words are fine for showing that. I'm telling you. I'm having a hard time. I'm telling you too. I'm telling my friends. I'm making it verbal, which is just as good as making it physical. People still know. I don't have to physically show it. But I know it'll get better because I've gotten over harder things and I'm hanging in there and I really get, hope you guys do that too because life isn't perfect and crazy things happen but it's what we make of life that makes it worth it and um, just hang in there love yourself guys know that you deserve freedom in life and happiness and all the support you need I love you guys and I'll talk to you next week bye